The study of chance and probability has important applications in many fields, including physical and biological sciences, economics, politics, sport, life insurance, quality control, and production planning in industry, just to name a few. This video is designed to introduce some of the essential terms and elements in understanding probability. So, let's begin. When we discuss probability, there are many different terms that we use. The first of which is an event. An event in probability is simply something that occurs. Examples of events are tossing a head when we flip a coin, rolling a four on a die, or having a day when it rains. The probability of an event occurring is the chance of that event occurring. The probability of events occurring range between zero and one. If we have an event probability of zero, that means that the chances of that event occurring are impossible. Whereas if we have an event probability of one, the chances of that probability occurring is absolutely certain. For example, if we were to roll a normal six sided die, the probability of rolling a seven on that die would be considered zero because it's impossible. There's only six sides to that die. Whereas if we we're looking at the probability of rolling a number that's less than seven, the probability would be considered to be one because the chance of rolling a number less than seven is absolutely certain. Any possible result of an event is known as an outcome. When tossing a coin, for example, there are two possible outcomes, obtaining a head or obtaining a tail. When we talk about successful outcomes, we consider that to be the result that is required. For example, if we're trying to get a head when we flip the coin, our successful outcome would be a head. If we were trying to get a tail, our successful outcome would be a tail. When we talk about possible outcomes in probability, we talk about sample space. To calculate theoretical probability, we need to know what the sample space is. A sample space is simply a list of all the possible outcomes, and these outcomes must all be equally likely. Continuing from our example of flipping a coin, our list of possible outcomes is either getting a head or a tail. So this here is also known as our sample space. Knowing our sample space helps us identify what the probability of a successful outcome is. For example, if we wanted to know what the probability of flipping a head on a coin is, we first look at how many successful outcomes do we have in our sample space. Here, it's nice and simple. We've only got the one, and we put this on top of our fraction. On the bottom of our fraction, we need to identify how many different possible outcomes there are in our sample space. Here, there are two, so that two becomes the bottom of our fraction. We've now represented what the probability of flipping a head is on a coin in fraction form. We can also represent this as a decimal, which would be 0.5, or as a percentage, which would be 50%. All of these values are the same. Let's think about a different problem. What if we rolled a normal six-sided die? The possible outcomes in our sample space would be rolling a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. If we want to know what the probability of rolling just a 2 on that dice is, we would need to first identify how many successful outcomes there are. In this case, we've only got the one. So we list that on top of our fraction. On the bottom of the fraction, we need to count how many total outcomes there are within our sample space. In here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that six is represented on the bottom of our fraction. So we've found that the probability 
of rolling a 2 is 1 in 6. What if we want to know what the probability of rolling either a 1 or a 2 is? Well, we go through the same procedure. We start with counting the total number of successful outcomes there are in our sample space. So, 1 is a successful outcome, 2 is a successful outcome, so we're at 2 so far. 3 isn't, 4 isn't, 5 isn't, 6 isn't. So we have two total successful outcomes. Now we count how many outcomes there are. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 total possibilities or total outcomes in our sample space. And that 6 is represented on the bottom of the fraction. We then simplify the fraction if we can. So 2 out of 6 is the same as saying 1 out of 3. So we've got a 1 in 3 probability of rolling either a 1 or a 2 on this dice. So to summarise, if we want to know what the probability of an event is from occurring, we first need to list out our sample space of all the possible outcomes that can occur. From there, we count up the number of successful outcomes there are in our sample space, and we divide it by the total number of outcomes that we listed in our sample space. Remember, for this simple probability, we're looking at situations where all outcomes are considered to be equal. Now, it's your turn. Practice is the best way to get an understanding of what you're doing. I would like you to take a look at the following problems. I want you to start by listing all the possible equally likely outcomes which is known as the sample space. Then identify which outcomes are considered to be a successful event. From here, calculate the probability of a successful event occurring.